Hey, real quick, this video is part of my 12 days of Christmas celebration. And basically, to celebrate the fact that I've been on YouTube for more than a year and the fact that it's Christmas, I'm gonna be doing daily videos for a little while so that you guys can enjoy that. However, I also want this to be a bit of a gift for my girlfriend, so I'm gonna be not having any of these videos edited so that she can take a break from that for a while. Don't worry, I'm also getting her real gifts. Don't worry about that. After the 12 days of Christmas are over, we're gonna take a little bit of a break and come back on January 14th, so look forward to that. Hello internet, my name is the Golden Stalfos, and today I'm gonna talk to you about One Piece, and more specifically, one Piece on Netflix, and more specifically, not the live action adaptation, because it will be bad. All of Netflix's live action adaptations are bad. In fact, I think every live action adaptation of an animated series has been bad. So there's that. Like, there's a reason that things are animated in the first place, and it's because you can do things with animation that you can't do in live action. So you're necessarily losing something when you make the switch between the two. Like, it's it's ridiculous. But putting that aside, like, what if we had an actual animated series in the Netflix format? What would that look like? Because Netflix does their things a little bit differently than other uh, series, right? A Netflix series is 10 one-hour episodes. I mean, usually, you know, sometimes they take... An existing anime and just slap the Netflix logo on it and it's normal length episodes but like that's weird but they release all the episodes at once and they release 10 one hour long episodes all at once now Japanese anime are made to fit a 23 minute time slot and there's a lot of time taken up by like the intro and the outro and the as seen previously on sections and all that so you can typically typically get three episodes per hour, which means that a standard Netflix season could fit basically 30 episodes worth of material, give or take a bit. Now, for most shows, this isn't really a good thing. Like, Cowboy Bebop is super episodic and doesn't even have 30 episodes, so if you were to take the episodes and convert them into one-hour format, you would lose the episodic tone and end up with only like nine episodes actually i think eight something like that which is just one more reason why the cowboy bebop adaptation was destined to fail also i don't know why they bothered making a cowboy bebop adaptation because like joss whedon already did that like 12 years ago or whatever it even got a movie like it's okay we have live action bebop it's it's fine I know some Firefly stands are going to be mad about that comparison because it's different or whatever, but you know what? You're right. It is different. Bebop is better. That's, that's how it's different. Anyway, the point that I'm getting to is that for a lot of shows, being condensed in this way doesn't really help at all, but for One Piece, it would help a lot uh, because one, the original anime was built on stall tactics. The animation has always been running side by side with the manga, and they keep having to find new ways to stretch it out. You know, at some episodes, like the actual episode part, and not the recap, but the new stuff, doesn't start until like eight minutes in, which is insane. Sometimes they'll take a fight sequence that's supposed to be really short and snappy, and they'll stretch it to cover an entire three episodes. They don't do too much like filler, like pure filler arcs, but they do that every once in a while too. So if a new production company wanted to, you know, adopt a new format and streamline the footage and make it a little bit more succinct and all that kind of stuff, they could do a lot with it. For example, industry wisdom is that if you're adapting manga to anime, you should have at least two to three chapters of the manga per one episode of the anime. One Piece has about a one-to-one -one ratio at the moment. <laughs> Not quite, but it's pretty close. But if you think about it as adapting directly from the manga, then one episode is basically one entire volume of manga. One one-hour Netflix episode, right? And there's a lot you can do with that. Like, a lot. Especially if you're willing to cut out some of the less important elements so you can get to the more important stuff a little bit faster. 
like this version of the show probably wouldn't have any time for stopping on Gaimon's island and doing that for 20 minutes like that's not necessary and to be fair based on the titles for the episodes that have been leaked um for the new netflix series it looks like they're planning to block out the episodes in a way that makes sense for that it looks like they're planning to end season one with the entry into the grand line which i think is great like ending the season with that big dramatic moment where they all break the barrel together would be awesome but a new adaptation also pre presents new opportunities to improve the story a little bit. Now, Oda doesn't make a lot of mistakes with One Piece, and quite frankly, there's very little room for improvement. But there are a couple of things that kind of irk me about the series. Like, for example, Ace and Sabo. They're introduced way too late. They get no screen time to characterize them or get us interested in them. And they're supposed to be important. Like, like, Ace's death is, like, the most important thing in the entire series. And he gets, like, three chapters on panel before that happens. Like, he's a non-character. And Sabo is basically, like, Ace version 2.0. And, and he feels like a cheap replacement so that Oda doesn't have to have a serious death in his series even though he needs a serious death here and it wouldn't feel that way if Sabo was introduced early what I think should happen is episode one you know you do the introduction with Shanks but that whole sequence takes like maybe 10 minutes you know the anime version had intro outro recap um, this weird opening sequence where the hat is flying around and they have to catch it. And then at the end, there's a follow-up sequence where they catch the hat and then, like, it's a whole thing, right? And the amount of episode that's actually dedicated to the flashback where we see what happens with Shanks is just very small. So you spend, like, ten minutes doing the Shanks story, right? And then after that, Garp shows up and takes Luffy to the island where he lives with uh, Sabo and Ace for a while. And then, you know, you montage the three of them hanging out, doing their sake thing, all that. And then the pirates show up, and there's a, a you know, shrunk down version of the conflict. Because, like, quite frankly, no one cares about that whole thing. Like, like it, it got an entire arc in the anime, and I... I didn't watch that whole arc. Like, d do you think anyone has time for that shit? <laughs> I mean, part of the reason no one cares is because that arc comes after Ace's death. So, like, you know, but but still. But yeah, I think you could do a really simplified version of, you know, those three kids run into some pirates and have to fight them off, and one of them seemingly dies, and, you know, all that within you know, the remaining 40 minutes of the film, or of, of the episode, right? And then in the last couple of minutes, you, you know, you just flash forward to when Luffy sets sail and gets caught up in the storm. Then episode two can cover everything from the introduction of Kobe to the defeat of Axan Morgan. Nice and simple. Episode three can be all of this stuff with the buggy pirates. Then episode four can be Syrup Village. Then probably five and six on Baratier. Then probably the next three episodes doing the Arlong stuff. And then the last episode is Logtown and the Grand Line. Like, that's a really great layout for season one of the show. And it gives us the opportunity to meet some of the most important characters of the series early on so that they feel important to us. Now, season two is where this kind of planning gets a little complicated because I don't think there's enough footage in Alabasta to cover, you know, 10 hours in that kind of format. Because realistically, you take one episode to cover Laboon and Whiskey Peak. You get one episode to cover Little Garden, you know, one more for Drum Island. And then the next stop is Alabasta itself. Now, there's a lot that happens on Alabasta, but... It's not more than three, maybe four episodes tops. So now you've got the Alabasta arc ending 
six to seven episodes into season two. Now, you could maybe make Drum Island last for two episodes, but I think it would suffer for that. Like, as it is, Drum Island is a kind of a bloated section. Like, really, the important stuff is they show up on the island, they get medical attention, they meet Chopper, they beat a bad guy. And, of course, we also need to get Chopper's backstory and some information about the island along the way. But the actual sequence of events that gets us through that stuff includes a whole bunch of pointless back and forth, the characters nearly missing each other as they travel across the island both ways. You know, it's weirdly drawn out in a way that most One Piece stuff isn't. And if you cut out a lot of that back and forth stuff and let the characters just sort of go directly to where they need to be, then it's a much faster story. And I think it would probably feel a little bit more enjoyable in that situation as well. Some people might try to point out that the episode of Chopper movie is almost two hours long, but one, that's like the total runtime of the film, which includes like all the intro shit and all the outro shit. And two, in order to sell that in home video markets and whatnot, they had to make it movie length, so it's stretched out. I think you could just as easily compress the story into a one-hour format if you wanted to. But even if you give Chopper two episodes, you're at most eight episodes into a ten-episode season with the Alabasta stuff. So that's a little rough. So what you should probably do is give six or seven episodes to the Alabasta arc, and then the remaining three or four to the Skypea arc, because the Skypea arc is also rather short overall. You know, you spend one episode on Jaya, two episodes in the sky, then that's about it. Uh, the Skypea movie that they made is an hour and 45 minutes, and I mean, it compresses things quite a bit, so y you could stand to make it a little longer than that. But, but yeah, I think if season one covers everything up to entering the Grand Line, Season 2 covers everything up to the end of Skypea, and then Season 3 starts fresh with uh, Water 7, you know, and we just do Water 7 in Eni's lobby for an entire season, because that's about the amount of time that that shit needs. <laughs> now, I know some people in the comments are going to facetiously ask about fucking Foxy Pirates and the Davy Back games, and fuck that arc. Fuck that arc completely. It's garbage. It, it only exists to foreshadow the the themes of Water 7 and Eni's Lobby. But, like, why foreshadow the themes when you could just do the themes really well? Having it done twice back-to-back -back just makes it feel worse. It, the, the only reason that arc exists is to undermine the next arc, and it's the best arc in the series. Fuck the Foxy Pirates. They suck. They're awful. Like... Again, Oda doesn't make a ton of mistakes in his story, but Foxy is one. Foxy is a giant fucking mistake. None of that arc should have happened. Whatever. It's not important. None of it is important. So yeah, skip the Foxy Pirates, go directly to Water 7, and then just proceed onward from there. I think the next season would probably be both Thriller Bark and Sabote. Now, getting to the end of Sabote within four seasons may seem a little rushed, but keep two things in mind. One, it's supposed to be rushed a little bit. One Piece is long, and most people who are new to it aren't going to want to sit through forever amounts of it, you know? And two, even if it wasn't rushed at all, we're looking at 90, 90 chapters per season, right? Like, even if we don't rush at all or skip any chapters because they're too, you know, side story-ish, you know? That alone would put us at 460, right in the middle of uh, Thriller Bark. Actually, right near the end of Thriller Bark. And the end of Sabote is in is at 513, right? So like, so all in all, I think four episodes or four seasons to get to the end of Sabote is pretty good, especially because that means uh, you can get to the halfway point of the series at the end of season five, right? You know, and maybe by the time season five is over, we'll have actually reached the end of the series and we can plan out the rest of it. <laughs>
so yeah, I, I think that the Netflix format would actually be a really good way to adapt One Piece pretty quickly so that new fans can get into it and not have to worry about the insanely huge episode count, you know, because like it's not that much if you just watch it like like if you just watch a couple episodes a day you'll get through it eventually you know it's not that big of a deal but it feels like a lot when you're just staring up at that number and being like oh my god and so if we could condense it down and be like hey you can watch you know the whole thing in a hundred episodes or whatever like that's still a lot but it's much more manageable and because people are already primed to binge watch things on Netflix, I think people would be much more willing to accept, oh, there's 10 seasons of this show on Netflix, let's binge it, as opposed to, what, there's more than a thousand episodes, you know? And sure, you'd have to cut some things down, you'd have to streamline it a bit, but like, honestly, I think it's a good thing. And there's even some room to include some of the things you cut out, right? So... Even on a Netflix show, there's always an opening theme song and an ending sequence, like the, where the credits scroll by, and there's usually music with that too. So one thing you can do with these sequences, instead of just having them be generic slideshows of things that go in time with the music, you can have them be story stuff. And especially uh, you can have like the cover page stuff that often gets left out uh, when talking about One Piece. Because for anyone who hasn't read the manga, uh, the first page of every manga chapter is a little, like, side story thing, usually about one of the previous villains just, like, living their life and shit. It's crazy. And, you know, if you've got a minute and a half of We Are at the beginning of every episode, because that is the only correct theme song choice for this series, I will fight you over this then you might as well fill that time with a little slideshow of story stuff that got cut and those uh, bonus things that go on the front of chapters and stuff like that. You know, and when I say slideshow, I mean, like, ideally it would be like a silent movie slideshow where there's never any text bubbles or anything, and you just kind of get the story by watching people point or express their faces and stuff. Um, cause you only got a minute and a half, so, and there's music playing over the top of it, so you can't, like, do too much. But a lot of these sequences are like that, where they, you don't need to do too much. You know, like, like, most of the cover pages don't have dialogue on them anyway, because they're not supposed to. <laughs> and, you know, sure, maybe Gaimon's Island gets cut from the series, but you could do a little slideshow where it shows you know, Luffy and the crew finding an island, walking around, getting all spooked, laughing at a guy in a chest, looking up at the top of the plateau. You know, like, that doesn't take very long. You, you can show a slideshow of images for that in a minute and a half and get all the emotional impact of it and then some. Like, it's fine. Plus, if you do this, then on the occasions when... Uh, suddenly something from one of these cover stories becomes, like, essential to the plot, people aren't left in the dark. Like, um, you know, how does Buggy get his hands back when he shows up at Logtown, right? Like, well, there was a whole thing about that, and, uh, and in the original anime, they tried to turn that whole thing into one big episode, but it just feels like filler, and it, nobody wanted to watch it. It was, it was a bad episode. <laughs> but, you know, if you turn that into a slideshow at the beginning and end of episodes and spread it out across two or three episodes, then by the time we end up needing that information, we've got it, you know? And it didn't have to intrude on anything or become its own weird episode. It's just there, and it's nice. So yeah, I think there's a lot that you could do with his format, especially with a show like One Piece. Um, and I would love to see that happen. If Netflix wants to pull their heads out of their asses and stop trying to live action things that are perfectly good in animation, then uh, we could just get it all animated. That'd be nice, please. But you know, whatever. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next life.
Laters. Hey, Endcard here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, seriously though, please subscribe. I have like no subscribers. It's sad. If you want to find me on other social media stuff, you can do that at the Golden Stalfos on basically everything. Links to that are in the description, as well as to some charities I like, but am obviously not affiliated with. I also have a Patreon if you like me so much that you want to give me money. Though, obviously, only do that if you have money to burn. And if you do have money to burn, they're the charities I mentioned before. They probably need it more than I do. Mad ups to my girlfriend for doing all the editing for these videos. It's a really big help. Oh, and I occasionally stream on Twitch, so follow me there so you don't miss it. I don't have a formal schedule because when I tried to have a formal schedule, I couldn't keep to it. So, oh well. Okay, thanks. Bye.